Welcome to the funniest sketches of 2023. If you want to feel better about your health and you want to feel like a really in shape, healthy person, even if you're not, go on a cruise ship for a week. <laughs> a lot of drinkers and eaters on those ships. It'll drink and eat you into feeling great. I, wow. I had never been on a cruise ship, ever. And Louis Black booked a comedy cruise and made me go. And I got to Miami, I'd never even seen a cruise ship up close. They're humongous. It holds 4,000 people. It's gigantic. My sister goes, what was it like? Maybe me and Matt will go. I go, here's what it was like. Picture if we were all in Las Vegas, standing in the Bellagio, and all of a sudden, it just sailed away. The whole building, and nobody panicked or acted weird. <laughs> I say, uh, bye. <laughs> hey, want to try a monkey ass rum punch? Yes, I love monkey ass rum punch. <laughs> Seven monkey rum punches later, you hear, and now we will be doing the safety drill. What? What? I'm hammered. I can't do a safety drill. It is on your muster station, which is located on the back of your key card. It will not match your deck or room, so please pay. What, 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 what? Now there's math involved? This is a terrible vacation. There's no math on vacation. <laughs> I finally found my room, and I was next to these lovely people from Wisconsin, and they had balloons all over their door. And uh, I was like, oh, hey, is it somebody's birthday or anniversary? And the guy goes, no. We just get so hammered on these ship and these rooms all look alike. So we decorate our door. <laughs> and the good news for you, sweetheart, is every time you find this door, you got a 50-50 chance of finding your room. <laughs> yes, I do, Mr. Milwaukee. You are my new best friend. Don't tell me alcoholics are lazy. Look at that energy. He had to get tape, balloons. He had to stop smoking for four seconds to blow them up. <laughs> there's a lot of activities. Oh, yeah. You get on this ship, and there's this giant neon board. It looks like a Vegas sports betting board. You're like, oh, it's still so overwhelming. You're like, oh. That looks fun, that looks fun. Well, if you're a sleeper inner or, or a drinker later, you will not be involved in any of these activities <laughs> because these will require you to be up at 6 a.m. with a fanny pack on, ready to jump in some dinghy with your new friends from Buffalo. And uh, no, because my friend Shay wanted to do it all. And I'm like, no, I am not getting up at 6 a.m. to go to Stingray Village. I, I, I don't have it in me. Uh, if someone puts the stingrays in my bathtub, I will pet them, but I am not, I, I'm not doing that. I don't care enough. Her and her husband, Mike, they did every activity. You sure? And she checked back in. You sure, Kathleen? Tomorrow we're gonna zip line through the Mexican jungle. Yeah? I'm sure there is nothing I could think of that would make me projectile vomit more quickly <laughs> than to be hot and hung over and shot through a Mexican jungle on a rubber band. No, no, I'm good. I am good right here on this chair with my monkey ass rum punch. And you know what? You call me crazy, Shay, but I question the safety of that apparatus. I truly do. Oh, no, 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 they make you sign a form. Really? What form? Who, who, who made those up? Juan and Julio in the van that won't be there when you come back with your flesh-eating bacteria wound that there's no hospital around. Hope you have a good time with the ship, doctor, getting your bacteria eating leg fixed up. If you're a drinker or a sleeper in her, your activity adventure will consist of getting off that ship at about noon into some sad little Mexican town where you're gonna hear a guy in an alley go, Psst. <laughs> and you don't know why, but you're gonna go over that guy. Because you want to hear what he has to offer. And <laughs> you're gonna go over there, and he's gonna show you a clipboard with pictures of pretty fish. And he's going to tell you he can take you to snorkel in there for $20. 
and you're gonna say 10. <laughs> you don't know why he even said that. And then he's gonna say 15. And the next thing you know, you're gonna be on a rickety ass Partridge family bus going to Christ knows where. <laughs> because that's when Lou got the maddest he's ever been at me because we were the only two that agreed to this adventure. <laughs> he was like, this is stupid. This is the stupidest thing you've ever talked me into. We don't know who the fuck that man is. We don't know where this bus is really going. I said, I know, Lou. That's why this is a real adventure. <laughs> Those people on that Royal Caribbean ship know exactly what time they're coming back tonight. <laughs> We may never come back tonight, Luke. <laughs> Do you understand the level of excitement I have provided for $15 a man? Come on. The worst thing about a cruise ship, though, is they have a TV channel on your uh, little boat channel. And in the afternoons, when I first turned it on, it's a picture of where you are in the ocean because there's cameras on the outside of the boat. You go, oh, isn't that lovely? And it's just the sea and nice spa music. But in the morning, no. When you turn that channel on, it's not the lovely ocean with spa music. It's a picture of your bill from the day before. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, how mean is that? What kind of buzzkill is that? This is vacation. I don't need to review my bad behavior on a daily basis. What kind of sadist is running this ship? That is horrible. That, all that can wait till sad Sunday when it's checkout time. <laughs> and I see the bill and I go, oh my God. And then I become alarmed and I have that conversation that I seem to have with myself about once a year when I see it on paper and go, holy Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think you're an alcoholic. <laughs> hey, hey, shh, 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 Hey, it was vacation. <laughs> ah, you bought drinks for those nice people from Buffalo. The drinks were overpriced. I think you need to take that alcoholic test online. <gasps> Always guess wrong. They don't let you explain anything. The world is black and white to those people. The world is not a black and white place. The world has gray areas. Question number four example. Do you drink at home alone? True. However, I used to go out and drink with my friends at bars, and then they said I couldn't drink and drive. So, so now I stay home sometimes and drink and watch Shark Week. So, am I an alcoholic or am I just a really good citizen who loves America? I love America! Have you ever seen somebody at the grocery store? You ever seen a fella in there staring at a head of cabbage? I was up there one time, I seen a dude all by himself staring at a head of cabbage. I got a theory about that. That guy's wife sent him up there to get a head of lettuce. <laughs> all cabbage ought to come with a label on it that says, this is not what your wife wants you to buy. <laughs> Three days before Thanksgiving, my wife sends me up to the grocery store to get some yams. 45 daggone minutes, I'm looking for yams. I can't find a daggone yam. I come home, I said, they ain't got no yams up there. He goes, you mean to tell me three days before Thanksgiving, they don't got no sweet potatoes at the grocery store? <laughs> I'll be right back. But I'm on a diet now. I'm eating nothing but fruit loops. But my wife has me on a... <laughs> my wife has me on a diet now where I can have one cheat day. So I can have a hamburger with the cheese and the bun one day a week. Or any time I drive by a fast food restaurant when she's not with me in the car. All right. <laughs> 
She's a stickler too, I'll tell you what. She'd be up here sleeping two thirty in the morning, the dog go down there and bark at the door for ten minutes. She don't hear nothing. She's racked out. I gotta go down there and let the dog out. So the next day I go down there, I'm kinda hungry, I pour a little little bowl of Captain Crunch down there. I hear, get out of Captain Crunch. <laughs> what the hell? I should have barked when I poured that Captain Crunch in there, but I should have done. It sucks getting old and fat, I tell you. I remember when my beard turned white, my, my, my wife was like trying to comfort me. Oh, that's okay, honey. I like somebody with a little salt and pepper in their beard. Made me feel a little better. Then she goes, it's the corn in your teeth that's disgusting. <laughs> I was going to say broccoli, but none of y'all believe I eat broccoli. All right, so I'd say that. You went upside down. Oh, I get done, I go, you didn't tell me you went upside down. The guy running, it goes, it's not supposed to. How about that Ferris wheel? You like that Ferris wheel? Who, me either. Oh, yeah, the Ferris wheel. That's a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing I like better in the whole world than being completely bored and terrified at the same time. <laughs> Which, by the way, is the same thing my wife told me on her honeymoon right there. <laughs> you ever get stuck on the Ferris wheel? Oh, man, I was up here with my kids. We were stuck. They was crying, freaking out, trying to calm them down. Don't worry, kids. We'll be all right. I'm sure that guy running it with seven fingers and a pentagram tattoo. All right, I'm sure. My wife likes to go with me when I go to Las Vegas because she likes to go see the Chippendales. Yeah. You know why she likes going to the Chippendales? She didn't marry very good. <laughs> she married a Chunkendale. She gives me money to put my clothes back on, but she does. <laughs> I had to go get a flu shot one time. I didn't want to go to the doctor, and my wife goes, well, shoot, run up to Walmart. They're giving flu shots. Are you kidding me? I ain't getting a flu shot at Walmart. <laughs> that gum, normally I got to get vaccinated before I go in there. <laughs> get a flu shot at Walmart. The flu's the last thing I'm worried about at Walmart, all right? That gun, they probably got Ebola behind a box in there somewhere I didn't know about. I was up there one time, there was a dude out front in a hazmat suit. I'm like, is it safe to go in there? He goes, yeah, why? I go, you're in a hazmat suit. He goes, I know, I work here. I'm collecting the carts. I don't give a damn. Back to you, asshole. I'm sorry, just kidding around. What was your first name here in the blue shirt? Oh, Nick. Oh, Nick. Good oh, to yeah. see you, Nick. Now, Nick, what do you do for a living? I work in construction. Oh, construction. What kind of construction? What do you do? I work with a general contractor. Well, you work with a general. You're not the general contractor. Oh, no. You work not with one. I will be. So what is your title, Nick? Nah, I guess you can consider it uh, framing and drywalling. Framing and drywalling. Uh, got anything for that, dumbass? <laughs> You know, Nick, we got jokes for doctors and lawyers and even trash collectors, but the framing and drywalling guy. Not in our arsenal of snappy comebacks. <laughs> and we're not gonna bother going home and writing any, because hey, what are the fucking odds now? <laughs> It was Nick, all right? Was it Nick or what? Nick? Yeah, Nick. Nick and Mike. Mike and Nick. <laughs> Dumbasses. <laughs> Be nice to the crowd. I don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now some of the folks signed these and some of them didn't. I don't give a damn. All right, all right where is uh, Valerie? What is that? I don't know. What is it? Renu? Renee? Remy? Ramsey? Valerie, where are you? I hear about right there. He says, Dear Walter, how do you take off 10 years to look younger? Oh, me? Oh, that would be Thompson's water seal. <laughs> it 
This is from Milton. Dear Walter, my wife sits at home all day and won't work. How can I get her to get a job? Well, Milton, you're going to have to die. <laughs> That'll teach the bitch. <laughs> Where is uh, Nick Manos? Right here. Uh, oh, Nick! Oh, oh, Nick. <laughs> Nick says, Dear Walter, you're looking a little frustrated. When's the last time you got laid? <laughs> oh, crap, I recognize him. That's our gay stalker. <laughs> I need medical transportation. I grew up very stereotypically, man. I didn't play basketball, football. I grew up playing ping pong. <laughs> Competitively. That was a serious national sport back home, man. You know, I didn't go to any like fun summer camp, space camp. My dad sent me to a ping pong training camp in Guangzhou, China. <laughs> I almost died. It was a hundred kids competing for one spot on the national team. It was basically Fortnite with ping pong paddles. We took that shit seriously though. My dad would take me to every practice, every tournament game, and he always tried to give me a pep talk before every game. But you know Asian parents, they're way too honest. So every pep talk just turned into an insult. Like he would come up to me and be like, Jimmy, Jimmy, you're going to play well, okay? Even though you're slow, even though you're weak, and you suck. And then he would just walk away. Eventually, I became a good Asian American, and I went to school to get an economics degree because that was the easiest degree that can still appease my Asian parents. But then after I graduated, I didn't want to do like econ or finance. So I go, went up to my dad, I was like, Dad, I don't want to do any of this. I, I want to go try and do stand-up. And he's like, what's a, what's a stand-up? You mean like a talk show? I was like, yeah, sure, talk show, whatever you want to call it, okay? But I want to go pursue my dreams. And he was like, no. <laughs> Pursue your dreams, how you become homeless. <laughs> I was like, no, no, that, that, it's, things are different now. We're in America, okay? In America, we're supposed to do what we love. He was like, no. <laughs> Everyone does what they hate for money and use the money to do what they love. <laughs> That's that old school Chinese mentality, right? See, I'm like first generation, but my, my parents, they're like negative nine generation because they're so freaking Chinese. Like, it's really hard for me to watch TV with my dad because he's trying to make me explain everything to him. And first of all, all Asian people, they don't watch TV, they judge the TV. <laughs> this is like, I'm just sitting next to my dad on the couch and he's wearing his like old Asian man costume, which is just a wife beater and tidy whities <laughs> He just sitting there, arms folded, judging the TV light. <laughs> he just makes random noises around the house. Now whenever he sneezes, it's never just a sneeze. It's like a whole tsunami of sound waves that comes after. It's just like, oh, I was very good at math. That's a big Asian stereotype. I think there's some truth to that, not because of some weird genetic thing, just because our parents care so much more about mathematics and academics, right? You guys seen it? You guys seen those like Kumon Learning Centers in those strip malls, right? Right? Kumon Learning Centers, for you guys that don't know, are basically detention camps for young Asian children. <laughs> You can tell that place is kind of fucked up by the look of its logo. Because it's supposed to be a smiley face, but it's not really smiling. It's just like, man. My parents were way too cheap to send me to Kumon. They got a different strategy. 
They never let me use a calculator until I turned 15, so I can work on my brain function. That's an old school Chinese strategy. You know, so when I turned 15, it was a very special occasion. It was basically my quinceanera. <laughs> my dad just gave me a TI-83 plus. <laughs> and he looked me in the eyes, and he was like, you're a woman now, okay? <laughs> but when you're a kid, when your parents tell you you can't do something, what do you do? You rebel, right? So when I was 14 years old, I stole my brother's calculator. I stole Roy Rogers' calculator. <laughs> and I locked myself in my room and I started rebelling. I started doing math homework. <laughs> Other kids were like fucking around with like alcohol and drugs. I was fucking up some problems, you know? <laughs> locked myself in a room, I was just punching in numbers. I was like, oh man, this feels great, you know? <laughs> it's so wrong, it's awesome. <laughs> My dad was pissed. He was knocking the outside of the door. He doesn't like locked doors in the house. And he was screaming. He was like, Jimmy, Jimmy, what are you doing inside? Come out right now. I know you're using a calculator. Come out right now. <laughs> I was so scared. I didn't know what to do. And he unlocked the door and he came in. I went into full panic mode. So I just threw away the calculator and I pulled out my pants. <laughs> I was like, dad, I was just jerking off. <laughs> And he came in, and he looked at me, and then he looked at the math homework. <laughs> and he was like, good, good, very good, very good, very good. You must have really like math, that's good. That's good. Keep it up. It's funny, like, I, I've been wife for 20 years now, right? And it's funny when you're with somebody that long, like, yeah, you figure at this point of our relationship, there's nothing she can do that could surprise me as far as like the racial stuff, right? The, the difference between black and white stuff. But she still be doing stuff that confuses me, right? Like we got a pool in our backyard and my wife put on, my wife put on a bathing suit and she'll head to the backyard and I'll be looking at her and I'll say, what are you doing, baby, you going swimming? She goes, no, I'm just gonna go lay out. I'll be like, for what? <laughs> You're already black, baby. I mean, you have won the tanning game. I just, I just don't know what the goal is back there, you know? Like, literally, my wife will go outside, and an hour later, she'll come back in, and she'll be like, Gary, look how dark I got. I was like, you was dark when you left! <laughs> she don't get no darker. I don't do that in the winter. I don't go in the snow and come back in. Baby, look how white I am. It's like I'm a snowman. I feel like I'm in the movie Powder. <laughs> we got two boys and a girl, man, you know? You know, my daughter's the youngest, and she, you know, she's the, she's the militant one in the family, though. Man, she, like, she don't want to be white at all. Like, my boys don't care. They ain't tripping off nothing, but my daughter, man. Everything that goes wrong with her life is my fault. My fault. Like, well, like I said, we got a pool in our backyard, and the whole family be in the backyard swimming. You know, my wife and the boys, they be out there all day. My daughter's fair-skinned, so she's the last one in the family. So every 20, 30 minutes, me and her got to duck back in, put some aloe vera on, <laughs> come back out. She be mad. It's your fault, Dad. <laughs> like, I already, I already know, when my daughter gets to college, she's going to be leading all the protests and all the marches, you know? God, I call her Kennedy Kaepernick. She's Christ. She's serious with her. My daughter got mad at me last year because I stood up. I stood up during the national anthem. She goes, "You just gonna stand?" I go, "It's the seventh grade volleyball game. Let's break it down just a little bit, okay?" <laughs> Eighteen people in a junior high gym, okay? <laughs> like my my daughter's never watched NFL football in her life. Never watched the game. All of a sudden, all the Kaepernick stuff's been going on. Here comes my daughter. Hey, Dad, do you watch NFL football? I go, "Yeah, I'm watching it." She goes, "Oh." I can't believe you. I'm not watching another game with Colin Kaepernick's back in the league. I can't believe he ain't gonna stick with me. I was like, oh, f all right. I won't watch it on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. <laughs> she ain't even know. She ain't know. <laughs> I appreciate that, Dad. Hey, we, just, we in this family together, baby. It's crazy, too, because, like, 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 both my boys, both my boys, like, White girls, both of them. They both like white girls. But my daughter likes black guys. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, she gonna make me work. <laughs> I wish she'd bring a little white kid home. I could punk a white kid. What the f 
Sorry, sir. I don't know about that. Uh, black kid, what the f***? What the f***, sir? Oh, okay. All right. I see what you did there, young man. All right. Like my daughter went to my daughter went to her, her first homecoming dance last year, right? You know, big ass brother asked her out too. Big ass brother. I mean, this kid was six seven, two seventy, fifteen years old. That ain't normal, right? <laughs> but I will say this: the young man that took my daughter to homecoming, his parents are raising him right because his mom and dad made him call me to ask permission to take my daughter to homecoming. So I wasn't mad about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It still was a weird phone conversation, you know, because a kid's 15, his voice is deeper than mine, you know. Answer the phone, I was like, hello? Uh, Mr. Owen? The f <laughs> yeah? Uh, yeah, this PJ? Uh, I really, really want to take your daughter to homecoming. I was like, and my daughter, like, who is this green mom on the phone? <laughs> And then my daughter, my daughter don't tell me he's 6'7". I think I got a little 50-year-old coming to my house. I got my game face on. I'm a punk this little right? And as soon as he opened the door, I was like, what the, you ain't tell me he was this tall. <laughs> then he walked in the house and tried to build some kind of rapport with me, you know? Oh, uh, Mr. Owen, um, I, I just want you to know, sir, I, I think you're really funny. I said, ain't no funny around here, <laughs> He, 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 my I know what the you want, young man. Oh, something as easy as going through the drive-thru with my wife, it becomes a thing. And I try to be nice, right? I try to be patient. I try to get on top of it. Hey, baby, be ready. Okay. <laughs> One more car, it's going to be our turn. <laughs> know what you want. Oh, well, what do they have? <laughs> what do they have? It's McDonald's. <laughs> it's the same thing since we were four. Oh, it's our turn to order. She acts like she's never seen this menu. She has to lean over me. <laughs> Do they have whole wheat buns? Whole wheat buns? We're about to eat trash. It's garbage. You can't take whole wheat buns and then pick stuff out of the garbage and then put buns around it and make it healthy. I don't say that because I love my wife. What comes out of my mouth is, do you have whole wheat buns? <laughs> Look at that, baby, they have whole wheat buns. Oh, okay, I'll have nuggets. Oh, it's not her fault. She blames her sign. I'm a Virgo, that... I'm sorry, that's how Virgos are. We... Oh, even a nice restaurant. And we try, you know, we try to go on date nights. Even the nice restaurants becomes a thing. We get dressed up as soon as we sit down. You want to share a salad? Wouldn't it be nice if the two of us shared a salad? No. When have you ever seen me get off the couch, go to the kitchen, chop myself up a salad, and then give you half? I don't say that, that's in my head. What comes out of my mouth is, yes. She orders the salad that we're supposed to share. The waiter says ranch or blue cheese and she looks at me like I have the answer. I picked the salad. I know not to answer. But then I think to myself, well, maybe today's my day. <laughs> maybe today I get to make a decision for us. You know what, buddy? We're gonna do blue cheese. No, ranch. Suck! <laughs> you gotta laugh, though. I'll tell you that. If you wanna make it in marriage, you better be able to laugh. And if you can't laugh, call it a day. My wife is funny, man, and it helps. My wife made me laugh so hard one time I almost wrecked the car. I had to do a radio interview at six o'clock in the morning. I work at night. I told the wife, I said, why don't you come with me? You can help me drive back. My wife said, okay. I'm driving back, right? And my wife goes, are you okay to drive? I said, yeah, I'm good, but I could use a Red Bull or a Monster. And I turn around and she goes, Rah! 
Oh, you scared the crap out of me. You almost killed both of us, and that is hilarious. My husband is very smart and very quiet and an introvert and does very well and, um, uh, and then married me. And, and we've been exactly the opposite, but it has worked. Um, he's a big man. He's six four. He can kick a door in, and I like that. Um, he works like a dog. And he loves a baby. Let me tell y'all that he is a baby cuddler at East Tennessee Children's Hospital. He cuddles the drug-dependent babies every week of the world as a volunteer. I know, sweet. He didn't help me with mine. But... Cause he was out making a living. And paying for all this, we've got two still in college, and, and I wanted a fourth baby so bad when my baby child went to kindergarten. I nearly grieved myself to death. I thought, Lord, what am I going to do with all this time on my hands? I hope I don't get hooked on whiskey and start honky-tonking. <laughs> and about three weeks into her going to kindergarten, I was like, woohoo, woohoo, now I can go get a pap smear without somebody sitting on my head. <laughs> But my husband, when I dropped her off, we, he said, meet me at the IHOP. Because he knows that pancakes get me through a hard time. <laughs> and I was crying, and, and I said, I want another baby. And he said, why don't you get a job? <laughs> yeah, right. So... <laughs> I said, I want a fourth baby. And he said, y'all are sucking the financial life out of me. So he bought me a dachshund. I had that dachshund for years. She's gone now. But let me tell you, she and I both got thyroid issues. She had cushions. I was walking her in our neighborhood one day, and a little girl came out in her driveway, and she said, can I pet your groundhog? <laughs> So about my husband, all right, so my husband is a big man and is 6'4", I'm 5'8", we breed big kids, and, um, and we wanted them to be in sports and when they were growing up, and so we made them do all kinds of mess they didn't want to do, and we put our boy, when he was a little bitty, we put him in t-ball. He hated it. <laughs> Um, I don't know if any of y'all have had a baby play t-ball, but for those of you who don't know, t-ball season, it's about 110 degrees outside. It's little children that are four, look like they've got a diaper on under their baseball pants or a pull-up. Um, the games last about three hours. Nobody ever hits the ball, throws the ball, catches the ball makes contact with the ball. <laughs> My baby laid in a fetal position in the outfield the entire season. He never touched a ball. Every once in a while, he'd pop his little head up and say, water. <laughs> one game, it was so hot. And I, t I told the middle one to go out and take her brother a water bottle. She was about two and a half. And she went walking out there with a tutu and a crown and a wand and her pink prostitute shoes from Walmart. <laughs> she walked about halfway, stopped, got a glazed look over her eyes, pulled her little panties to the side and pooped in the t-ball thing. <laughs> she really did. So I had to run out there and get a stick and flick it into the woods because I didn't want another child to step in it or think it was a milk done. But do not worry, I'll never blow up anything if I don't have my lucky charm, which I lost. You had a lucky charm, yeah, what was it? I had a little camel's toe. What the hell are they 
laughing at? What? I had a little camel toe. You used to look at it all the time. I'm not kidding. He would rub it for good luck. <laughs> Seriously? Can we sell little fake ones online? Ahmed's lucky camel toe makes a great stocking stuffer. <laughs> You think anybody saw that? <laughs> Where is it? It's on the floor. Get it, you idiot! Get my freaking arm! Go get my arm! Okay, no way! What? Don't leave me here, I'll fall down. <laughs> Go with me, okay? What? Okay, put it back. Okay, cut this. Okay, sorry, I don't know how to cheat construction. <laughs> All right, fine, there. Right. It's not funny. I kill you from here. <laughs> how would you do that? Just throw me. <laughs> Why not? You did peanut. <laughs> Can you put it back? I think, I don't know what's wrong. Just put it back. You are so cute. <laughs> All right, I think it's good. Is it okay? Oops, sorry. Don't touch my leg. It's not funny. Don't touch it, I can do this myself. No! It's not funny. Start laughing. Start laughing at me. This is not funny at all. This is all your fault. I kill you again. What? I can do it. Don't touch my leg. <laughs> I still got it. <laughs> You want me to fix? Yes, fix my leg. Okay, don't touch my wee wee. <laughs> you don't have one. It's a phantom wee wee. <laughs> His name is Robert. <laughs> Unless it's really cold, then it's Bob. <laughs> and don't make it talk. I <laughs> All right. <laughs> <What> the hell? <laughs> Not funny at all. Okay. But I think we're good. All right. So now. <laughs> what the hell? How can I be naked? I feel naked. Fix all this. I'm going to bite you to death. It's not funny. Not funny one bit. This one won't stay. I don't know where. <laughs> Take it out. I can feel that. <laughs> I want to call it quits? I think so. Corey, you got a girlfriend? 15? You ain't ready. You ain't got no job. Why you got a girlfriend? You ain't ready. You're 15. Do you love her? No. You're 15. You can't love a woman. No. Love hurts. You know when you love? Look at these women, 40 and 50. Look how they sit with the man. That's a love thing. There's a lot of pain come up through that situation. Where you get these tickets from? That's love. You just holding hands. You look so good. <laughs> oh, you look so good. <laughs> you in heat. 
your little hormones jumping off. <laughs> Relationships are so hard. Relationships are so hard. I think we got marriage. I think we should redo marriage. Let's redo marriage. Let's redo marriage. Let's make it difficult to get married, easy to be divorced. Let's make it difficult. You got to pay money up front. You got to pay a fine. You got to pay money. How much you love her? It's going to cost you 20000 Whoa, hey. Whoa. Hey. I don't know about that. Think about it. If the more money your parents spend on your, on your wedding, the longer you got to stay married. If your parents spend 20000 we ain't working out. You got four more years to stay. You're going to make this work. We're going to put 20000 in. I don't care if y'all hate each other. You stand for four more years. That's what the contract says. <laughs> think about if you had all those fines. Think you have to go lawyers. Just like you do with divorce. You have to sit with a lawyer. So what do you think? How much stuff is yours? I brought most of it. Oh, did you? You have most of it. Most of it. I still love you, but this is my stuff. <laughs> You'll see the real side come out. See, divorce should be easy. After you've spent 75000 Divorce me like this. You want to hang in there? No, I'm done. Okay. You keep one kid, I keep the other. Which one you want? I'll take that one. <laughs> look, how, look how she looked at me. But you know I'm right. You know I'm wrong, but I'm right. You know I'm wrong, but I'm right. Some things are wrong right. Some things are wrong right. Like, like being in the mall and your kids can't find you, you should be able to leave. If they can't find you, <laughs> legally, you should be able to go to the police. He was not with me when I got to the car. I told him. And he is old enough to know I was leaving. He's old enough. So he can't sue me. I told him. I don't know why y'all brought him back here. I had one for a second. Ain't easy, man. Ain't easy being in a relationship. Ain't easy, easy being a parent. Think about it. The last easy time. Record this is the easiest time in your life. 15 years old. This is easy. Got nothing to do, go play some sports. Mama come pick you up because you can't walk home. It's only like half a block. Oh, I can't walk. I can't walk home from practice. How many times you call your mom? You can see her. Mom, you gonna come get me? I'm looking right at you. I'm looking right at you. Just walk. Follow my, follow my voice. Follow my voice. So It don't make no sense, man. It don't make no sense. That's why I said, but see, in, in Detroit, this is my little, I, I'm from Benton Harbor, Michigan. That's my home. My home is Benton Harbor, Michigan. You know, see, it's funny. When you're young, Benton Harbor is far from Detroit. It's far. Kalamazoo's 47 miles away. The older you get, you start claiming the whole state. So I was young, now I'm from Benton Harbor. The older you get, no, I'm from Michigan. And then the older you get, I'm from the Midwest. And then the older you get, I'm from America. We all related. We all from America. 